Hello, friends, and welcome to Activate and Thrive and to our weekly Thriving Thursday chat where we visit with different beautiful health-minded people uh, each week on Thursdays at noon, East Coast U.S. time. Uh, and we uh, hold these right here on Facebook Live as well as uh, sharing them to Instagram and YouTube afterwards. So whether you're catching us live now or watching on one of our platforms later. It's great to have you with us. Thanks for joining us. My name is Don Krishna Swami. And I'm Mia Krishna Swami. And our guest today is Malia Jacobs. Malia is an intuitive consultant. And for the last 20 years, she's been working with clients all over the world, sharpening her gift of powerfully life-changing intuitive work. She facilitates breaking the erroneous cycle of the human condition, if you will, uh, for high performance clients. She uses techniques to develop resiliency, innovative and resourceful life leaders who achieve real world results, you know, in all areas simultaneously, personally, professionally. And she works with athletes, creatives, performers, all while leaving a legacy. After transcending Lyme disease, chronic illness, um, alcoholism, and, and multiple traumas, Malia herself made a comeback. And now she helps others to transform their lives. She rides and competes in dressage with her beautiful Warlander horse Andromeda. And she lives with her husband on an enchanting houseboat surrounded by the city of Seattle. Sounds so romantic. <laughs> really? Welcome. So beautiful. Welcome, Malia. So welcome, Malia. We are so delighted to have you with us today. Thank you. I, thank you, both of you. I'm just thrilled to be here. Appreciate Aww. it. Can you tell us when or how you first realized that you had this intuitive ability and when you realized that you could use it to help other people? Ooh, that's a great question, especially the latter part of that one. Um, it was about, uh, it was right after I quit the drink, 27 years ago this month, wow, um, about six months after, thank you, uh, it was a long time between cocktails, uh, I, went to, <laughs> <laughs> I went to an animal communication workshop, it was a two-day workshop in the greater Seattle area on Vashon Island, which happens to be one of my favorite islands around here, and uh, the, the gal who was teaching it, uh, her name's Mary Getton, and it was a two day workshop and day one was, you know, practice and kind of theory and everything. And day two, we were all allowed to bring an animal. And so not many people brought cats and horses and such. There were dogs and one turtle. So when it came time to practice, I was like, I don't think I want to practice with the turtle. No offense to the turtles of the of the world, but there were so many dogs there, and I brought one of my Rottweilers at the time. I had two. I brought Charlie, and there was a Bernese Mountain Dog across from the circle of, from me. About thirty people, maybe thirty-two, and I picked that that person and and her dog. And there were sample questions like, "What color is your bowl? What kind of food do you like? What do you not like?" Uh, would you like more treats? Just generic sample questions, if you will, like 10 to 12, perhaps. Uh, it's a long time ago, so I can't, <laughs> I don't know exactly how many questions there were, but I went ahead and did that. And I was encouraged, we were all encouraged to like focus on the, the hits, not the misses that we got. Cause you know, sometimes things are found out later, like two weeks later, oh, that, that was accurate or whatever. So with all the, um, courage I could muster I went ahead and just you know took my pen to my page and I had at the end of it like a 10 minute time 12 pages of long handwritten notes just scribbled out as fast as I possibly could it was beyond the color of the bowl it was the who's the guy that's coming over every other Wednesday he's got short uh brown hair lanky I may have a drug problem looks like a stepson you know it was just like on and on and on and on and on and she was you know jaw hit the floor and it was everything I, I got I picked up on was validated and I suddenly realized it was, I'll never forget the moment where I, I realized this is an explanation for what I've been experiencing my whole life. 
and it's not something that I've just been making up. And it, so I was, uh, afterwards, a, a lot of other people came up to me at that workshop saying, will you practice with my dog? Will you practice with my dog? So that's how, how, how it got started. And then it was, you know, friends, and then it was friends of friends, and it was like a love offering. And because I was working in film and production and uh, filmmaking. So man, this was just like a hobby until it wasn't. <laughs> and yeah. then, you know, I worked with animals all over the world and doing two-way telepathic communication. Uh, I do medical intuition, which is very helpful for humans that don't have a voice or nonverbal or preverbal or, or animals who don't speak our language. So I'm there to like kind of interpret, if you will. I don't understand how any of it works. I can tell you how I think it works, but it's probably not what's going on anyway. I feel like I'm a satellite dish and I'm reading energy. And by now I have signs and symbols and I have a framework for my signature sessions. And, uh, but I didn't always have that. So it's, it's, it's been an evolving process. And you know now the people that I was working with their animals years ago, those animals have transitioned and now I'm still working with their people. Sometimes they get new animals and they get included in sessions. And now it's been primarily people or uh, equine athletes, sport horses, um, large exotics in optimal settings or working canines like bomb sniffer dogs or service dogs. I will volunteer my time and expertise with, you know, sanctuaries and such. So that's how it all got started. Wow. So that is fascinating. It started with the animals. With the actually. animals. That's very interesting. Yes. You can talk to the animals. <laughs> <laughs> well, and my dad was a vet and my uncle was a vet. So I, I know I know they're infinitely proud of me. Mm, well, yes. we're I feel huge like every time I, I, I get every time I get to do it, I'm I'm mm -hmm. I think of my dad like the veterinarian. How mm -hmm. how proud he must be. So oh. like keeps that connection alive. It's just yeah. really lovely. So oh, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm skipping to like another question, but it's it's germane to what you just talked about. Cause we, we kind of uh, put this forward as it being about extreme self-care through nutrition, animals, sleep, friends, fellowship, and natural medicine. And so we're very interested that, that again, it was the animals that got you started with this. Can you, can you talk about animals as part of our extreme self-care mm -hmm. and just what their impact it was you've seen their impact to be uh for hours i could talk to you about that but i won't <laughs> today <laughs> animals i have found and i'm sure you all have too um they're great teachers they're in the present moment they are not thinking about yesterday they're not rehashing the rehash up here they're not future tripping trying to figure out what they're going to be doing 10 uh, minutes from now less. or two weeks from now they're just right here right now especially dogs you know you go to take the trash out you come back in and they're like oh i'm so excited to see you cats maybe <laughs> not so much but they're a whole different you know ball of wax they're and, and more I, persnickety I <laughs> they, they're just a little more persnickety uh, interestingly enough the two most challenging things i've uh come across with the animal communication is dog aggression and inappropriate elimination with cats very difficult to resolve that stuff i found side note so i i've just learned through um well what my dad brought home a, a german shepherd dog puppy that had blue eyes and so we i called it blue eyes and i must have been th about three years old maybe four and the dog had the puppy had parvovirus and so my dad brought it home because he didn't want to leave it at the veterinary hospital um and I just got in this cardboard box with the blankie and I held blue eyes and the, the family folklore, right, is that Malia you know, cured blue eyes by sheer love and just loving on this, this puppy. You know, my dad was doing what he was doing and bottle feeding and I was doing all that stuff. But that was just a very um, pivotal thing that happened. And it really did stick with me that this connection that we have with I mean, I'll include plants, plants in that, you know, I believe everything's energy, we're all connected, and animals, the way that they show up is just so remarkable. Um, there's so much to be learned from, you know, like zebra culture, or dolphin culture, or, you know, uh, the 
culture of uh, horses, for example, and the way that they communicate and the way that they communicate with one another and how we misinterpret their signs and cues and all that stuff and how I get to quiet my mind because we just, you know, monkey mind, we hear it called. I have um, some other names for that, but um, I won't go, go there now. Um, <laughs> it, I get to quiet that. And yeah. because when I walk into my lady's, you know, Andromeda's uh, stall, if I'm, you know, thinking about like what I didn't have for breakfast or, you know, whatever my stuff the, the constant thoughts that us humans have then like that's that's unsettling for her it's unsettling for them they're not like that right they don't have that prefrontal cortex that's just going 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 all the time they don't have resentments they don't plot against us the horses so it's quieting the mind so mindfulness meditation has been uh you know just a, a game changer for me with uh just my uh, extreme self-care and being present and you know i forget i forget how the saying goes about yeah yesterday's history oh I, I think i have it yesterday's history tomorrow's a mystery today is the present and that's why they call it wait today is a gift and that's why they call it the present the present there right. you go you get the yeah. idea jeez that, yeah. oh, sorry about that so, so <laughs> phew. Um, so yeah, they just are, they're present and they're not carrying around the baggage that us humans do. Mm -hmm. So when I am looking for inspiration or quieting this or quite quieting the harsh inner critic that goes on in the unconscious, you know, if I look around at my, you know, conditions in my life or the state of the, my houseboat, if it's cluttered or whatever, that's a direct reflection of my unconscious and even conscious thoughts. So that gives me a lot of power and control of changing those things, either outwardly changing my environment because tidy outside, tidy inside. Same mm -hmm. thing. I can do the mindset work, tidy inside, tidy outside. Mm -hmm. So I believe how we do anything is how we do everything. And most of it for me starts here with my mind. So if I, as, as much as I can quiet that, that allows for me to receive intuitive insights, intuitive hits, um, information, uh, serenity. That's a big thing, um, especially in recovery, or especially in early recovery. I have 27 years this month, and it wasn't always that my things were easy peasy, lemon squeezy. You know, my first two years of recovery, I didn't know how to boil water, balance a checkbook. I was 26. I didn't have life skills. Um, and now I do, and I, I get to be gentle with myself. So there's a lot of things I've learned and adopted and the standouts are meditation, animals, extreme self-care. And why do I call it extreme self-care? Because if I didn't, I probably wouldn't pay attention and neither would my clients. So, you know, I work with a lot of hard charging, you know, peak performers, athletes, and you know creatives on the top of their game and they just want more more mm -hmm. out of life more balance more peace more joy more serenity all of those things so i like to come in and help guide people to experiencing more more yeah. of what they truly want oh, that's I love it. that's I the love that on that yeah. and, and the the extreme self-care comes up a lot with those populations because mm -hmm. you know it's go 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 and it's not always the uh, you know, ask and receive. It's that two part process. So that's so a lot I, of what comes up. Yeah, because I think so much of, of life can be in that reactive state. But we don't want that, you know, we want to be in control, we want to feel on top of our game. And the only way to do that is to start with putting the oxygen mask on ourselves first. Good one. That Love that better. analogy. Yeah. So how do you, speaking of putting the oxygen mask, on, oxygen mask on first, how do you start your day with extreme self-care? Really, really early. <laughs> <laughs> I get up at 3 a.m. It was My 4, goodness. but then I was like, I want more you know, time in the dark <laughs> to uh, do my disciplinal practice. So I do get up early. I was wow. not always an early bird. Um, I used to think, I don't want to even be that woman who gets up, 
the stupid o'clock and <laughs> does all this stuff and then you know works on her novel till 2 a.m or something like that um yeah. and now i feel like I, i've got a very strict uh routine at night time to dial down so then when i wake up i wake up to the smell of coffee come downstairs i do my discipline mental practice which is pairing music which passively changes our brain waves science has shown us and um i i go to my special place my imaginal world the most <laughs> um powerful part of the human body is the six inches between our ears so we we do have a lot of power and control over our thoughts so i like to harness my thoughts and elevate my consciousness so i there's something else that i often say and that's insulate elevate radiate repeat so insulate means like insulate under my weighted blanket it, that's also extreme self-care my packy my teddy bear i'm of the school of thought that a woman's never too old or anyone's never too old to to have a teddy bear so i have a teddy bear uh, like an emotional support creature made from cast off cashmere sweater um so I'll, i'm the multi-pronged approach kind of person with all of that stuff so the discipline mental practice you know they didn't call them disciples for nothing D disciples hold disciplined states of consciousness so if i want to be uh experiencing you know something like a breakthrough with healing and health and um or you know mental wealth even then i'm gonna double down on the discipline mental practice go to my special place my imaginal world and feel that feeling and be detached with the outcome like the timeline how it shows up when it shows up where it shows up in what form it shows up i'm very detached and i just move in the general direction of my dreams dream adjacent is plenty good for me and i, I we always get to course correct along the way so i think that may have beyond answered your question perhaps no well, no what i love about that is, is that you're setting yourself up with that law of attraction you know and I love that you get up way before the sun. Where to the car? You know, and really because we're uh, taking part in a Grant Cardone class right now, and he's talking about beat the sun up. You know, I think yep. you like are magnifying that a lot more than we are. <laughs> You're getting up at three a.m. Do, wow. do it, do it. <laughs> oh man, it's awesome. Hardly recommend it. It's it's really. Um, I'm the woman that I never thought I could become. Mm. Yeah. Like when I was younger, you know, and kind of struggling and sick and all that stuff. And I have just been tenacious with it all. And here I am. It's mm. awesome. Can I ask you that since you mentioned that, um, how did you get on the other side of those health issues? Wow. Let's see. <laughs> I mean, I know we've uh, talked about self care, but sure. yeah, tenacity, um, the multi pronged approach, having a pit crew that I can rely on with um, natural healing modalities, primarily, you know, from a Rife machine that I have upstairs. Um, that's a technology out of Germany, I believe, and essential oils, food, food, food. <laughs> Mm -hmm. food is medicine animals are medicine and i don't mean like pharmaceutical medicine i mean like medicine to the soul mm -hmm. um so you know we are what we eat and i didn't really get that for a long time and someone once told me you know malia don't focus so much on cutting all these things out of your diet focus on putting the good things in and just by you know time passing the earth cooling <laughs> Uh, more good food goes in and less bad food goes in and 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 i you know my my eating habits have changed so it it's um you know i'm not afraid to ask for help uh physical therapy massage acupuncture uh you know i re really rely a lot on my naturopath she's a lyme literate naturopath here in the greater seattle area and you know, if I've got something going on with my schenectogazoink or something, <laughs> I will go and see her or her nurse for whatever, whatever she suggests, herbs, tinctures, homeopathy, the, the works. And, you know, you actually mentioned, uh, or, or at least we put again as part of our topic, uh, one aspect of extreme self-care, friends and fellowship. I think that's that's beautiful. And can you 
talk a little bit about that aspect of extreme self-care. Absolutely. Again, with the pit crew, I have a pit crew of true blue sister friends and, you know, all kinds of friends um, that I can call upon at any given time. You know, when I invest in my friendships, I show up the way that I want the other party to show up. And I know that I can't meet all my needs. Um, no one can meet, I, I, I believe, no one can meet all of their own needs. That's why we live in community. Um, mm -hmm. You know, my beloved can't meet all my needs, can't expect him to meet all of my needs. Um, but combined with friends and, you know, fellowship. So in, in recovery, I have a very robust fellowship in, in Alcoholics Anonymous, I'll just say. And um, I, my home group is uh, out of Ireland. So a lot of us are from all over the world on, uh, at Tesnua, Fresh Start uh, in, in Irish, and um, new, or new Beginnings, same thing. And I have met and deeply connected with some amazing, in, inspiring people from all around the world who are honest and open. And it's like no, no small talk. It's like, we're gonna talk about the real stuff, the stuff that moves the needle, the stuff, the trauma, the whatever, the family of origin things that are rotten our socks. So it's valuable, it's important to, you know, I take sponsorship very seriously in the program. Um, you know, I, I have one sponsee and I've decided I, I have the bandwidth for another sponsee or two. So I sponsor in a different kind of way. It's more like a mentorship. And then I have a mentor, um, Dr. Karen Jones, uh, who was my doctor for a good many years. And then she was a client. And now I've hired her as my embodiment coach and I, caregivers need caregivers. And I hold space for people to de-rubble their fa family of origin stuff, trauma, all those things and energy work at the end to you know, delete all that stuff. So I get to have someone that helps me fill up my cup because I know from experience and learning the hard way, we, I can't transmit what I don't have myself. And as long as my cup is running over, it's the excess that I get to give away. I'm not gonna try to give away from a, a place of emptiness. I will put that oxygen mask on until I don't need it anymore. And then, or I can, yeah, you, you get the analogy. Well, yeah, there's no one, <laughs> there's no one savior, right? I mean, really for all of us, it takes a village and yes. you know, we are not on an island. I mean, maybe some of us live on an island, but it's beautiful what you said about you, when your cup runs over, you give of the excess. I mm. think that's, that's just such a beautiful thought. I also wanted to ask about um, when you talk about natural medicine. I mean, we we ourselves at Activate and Thrive work with all natural. We call them we call them activators that basically turn back on certain switches in our cells that start to to dim over time. So we're all about natural approaches and natural remedies. And just share with us a little bit, bit about what you mean when you talk about natural medicine as part of your extreme self care. For me, it's like biohacking, epigenetics, uh, you know, food is a, an important component. I have a biological dentist. I realized I came to the awareness that I have had severe obstructive sleep apnea. So instead of just a CPAP machine, I went to the biological dentist and she put me in a device for quite a long time, a couple of years, that uh, prompted bone growth in my jaw. So my jaw fully grew in as it was supposed to. Got a phrenectomy and um, now I my airway is open. It's not two millimeters anymore, it's all the way open. So now I'm in the phase two, which is the teeth straightening phase with Invisalign. And then I'll be able to not have to stop breathing up to nine times an hour when I'm sleeping um, for up to a minute at a time sometimes. So. Wow. That is one thing I've done. Uh, you know, I'm just not opposed to, you know, the work of Joe Dispenza, for example, or okay. um, Bruce Lipton. <laughs> like I could just go on and on and on about all the things that I have uh, entertained and, and done myself from, you know, Rolfing, Feldenkrais, Bowen therapy. Uh, you know, I've done, I, I feel like I've done it all. 
<laughs> I really do feel like I've done all the natural healing, healing modalities. Mm. Well, you know, we come to that point in these <laughs> chats where we have to start to wrap it up and we never want to because it's so remarkable just to hear what you're sharing with us and what all our guests always share. Um, but as we come to a close here, um, can you share with our, our viewers, um, like if, if somebody's like, well, I, I love the idea of self-care and extreme self-care. I don't know where to start. Well, what, you know, what's one thing somebody could latch on to to get started in a journey of extreme self-care? Start where you are. You get to bloom where, where you're planted. Hmm. Proximity is power for better or not so much better. In other words, stick with the winners. If there's somebody like y'all and I want what you have, meaning vital health and all that stuff, then I'm going to want to like lean in and, you know, like stick with the winners. Y'all have what I want, that you have the robust health and all that stuff. So I think that's incredibly valuable. Oh, yeah, that, no, that's very valuable. Thank you so much for sharing that. My pleasure. Um, oh, yeah, no, absolutely. You have to bloom where you're planted. <laughs> so that, that's a great starting point, right? Realize, I guess, realize the blessings of what you have right now and grow from there. So that's beautiful. And gratitude. Oh, yeah, gratitude, yeah, gratitude is gratitude. huge. Yeah. And surrounding yourself way. with those that lift you up. You know, yes. And if you know yes. that you're in in something that's not doing that, then remove yourself from it. Right. Yeah. And, and that's okay. You know, it's okay. That's boundaries. Yeah. That's stuff I didn't learn when I was a kid. Now right. I get to know that stuff and put right. it into place. Right. Well, Malia Jacobs, thank you oh. so, so much for joining us today. It's been such an, an honor and delight to hear your perspectives and your journey and how you bless other people. Thank you so much for joining us and thanks everybody for watching today. We are Activate and Thrive and we run these Thriving Thursday chats every Thursday at noon East Coast US time and we share them on Instagram and YouTube. Thank you for joining us today and we hope to see you back next week. Malia. And we'll thank put you. Malia, we'll put your contact information yes. in the comments. So if anyone wants to reach out to Malia for her expertise, she's there to help Malia you. MaliaJacobs.com, simple as that. Yeah. All right, have a beautiful day. Thank you thank so you, much. Thank you, Maria. Thank you. Bye, y'all. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.